PTC Creo Parametric 3.0 Lesson 8, Part 2. In the second portion of the lesson, we're going to cover top-down design. Here we're going to make a component while we are in the assembly mode. Now, we still have the, if you still have the subassembly active on the screen, if you don't, you can open it, but then just close it and it'll stay in session. So we're going to start off with a new assembly and it's the clamp assembly, not the subassembly. I'm just going to make it quick here. Uncheck the default template so that you can put in your name. Again, I'll do everything kind of simply and give it a name. Again, follow the steps in the book. Now, what you want to make sure is that you have all your datum planes on. You might want to load your configuration settings, which we've done before. This is a 3.0, textbook. OK. And also, you might want to take a look. Well, it looks like we're OK. We're in triometric. We want to start off in triometric. <clears throat> Anything else that we can do in there? I think that's that's probably okay. What we do want to do is see the tree filters. We want to make sure the tree filters allow everything to be displayed in the navigation panel here in the model tree, like so. That way we can see features and we can see components. Otherwise, we would just see components. Now, we're in the model tab, and we're going to create rather than assemble. We're actually going to create at this point. And we're going to create a plate. I'll just use a simple version of the name here. It's a solid. So we're now going to enter, when we do this, locate the default datums, and then click on coordinate system to coordinate system. OK. And just select the coordinate system. And what it does is it puts in our other coordinate system for the new part. So this little tiny green dot that's next to the part name means that it's active. If that isn't on, then you're not working in the part mode. For instance, if I activated the assembly, then the part does not have the little green dot. Therefore, anything I do in this portion would be an assembly feature. And we want to make a part feature as if we were modeling right in the part without the assembly in the background. So we're going to click on the DTM3 for our first feature, and we're going to extrude. And let's go to center rectangle. And if you want to go into the 2D instead of 3D, you can do that. And basically, we're just trying to make a square. If you get two dimensions, just use the equal constraint to make them the same. And this is going to be three inches. I'm going to rotate it. Left mouse, right mouse button, OK. And we want this to be. 0.75. So if we go down here to our dimensions, we'll see that we're at 0.75 in three inches. Okay. Now I have my shading off. If you have your shading on, that's okay. We eventually turning it off maybe a look bit a uh, little bit better, but for now, <clears throat> Control D to get it back in here. I might at this point want to go to my colors and make something a little bit different. And of course, I don't want it to be that dark. So I can edit the color. And I can change my highlights also. Reflection color. All right, so I've got my first feature. You'll notice that the datum planes here are still available. <clears throat> in fact, when I, if you follow the steps in the book, I should have actually changed this to another name so it's identifiable. Because when we look here under the part, we're going to see that we have a coordinate system there, and they're basically over the top of each other. Now, one of the things you can do at any time you can click on these and right mouse button, move datum tag. You can actually move the tag a little bit. 
so that they're not on top of each other. You don't move them too far away. You can see as I rotate it, it looks far, it's farther than what I thought I was going. So just a minor movement is all you really need, like so. All right, so we've got our first feature and then the second feature is going to be a hole that goes down the middle of the part and here's our sizes for the hole. It's going to be a standard hole. So I'm in the model. Now the features that I can put in there are actually part features, not assembly features. So hole, uh, it's going to be no thread. Oh, no, it is going to be a thread. And it's a half an inch because one of the studs goes through here. It's going to be through all. And we look at the shape. It's going to be through all thread. And that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to pick a position on the front face here. And then I'm going to drag my drag to the datum plane. Like so. Now, if I look in my placement, I really want these to be aligned and to have it stay in the middle. So there's really no offset dimension needed or required. And that's my first hole. Now, the next hole is going to be a counter bore. And I go into the hole tool again. It's going to be standard. Uh, it's not going to have a thread. It's going to be through all. It uh, is going to be, the book says 5 eighths, and something's going to happen here that's a little odd. And I noticed this since we just downloaded the newest um, uh, production release. They do this every few months. And something changed, but uh, we'll, we'll play along with it and see what happens. It's going to be a counter bore. And through all, that looks OK, no thread. I'm going to click up here in the second quadrant, if you want to call it that. And I'm just going to simply, this time, I'm just going to drag my, I want you to do it exactly like I'm doing it, even though you might think it's wrong. And I'm just going to drag these like so. And then I'm going to look at my shape tab. Now, in the book, it shows that this field in here is free and clear. And for some unknown reason now, I have not been able to get it to do that. So first of all, I do know that my size is here a little bit different. And there used to be a time when you could actually take uh, previous versions, you could take this and you could toggle it a few times and it would give you what you want. But for some reason, it seems like they've gone and made it very strict as far as the size goes. You'd have to put this in with two holes or with a revolved cut if you wanted to get the sizes I'm giving you in the book. Let's go back to the half an inch one and free fit. And let's see what the dimensions are for this. Uh, bit farther down here. So this is a 0.875, 5.5 for the counter bore, and 0.53, 5.513. So let's get close to that. So let's go close here, 5.156. So we'll keep this one. So don't worry about the book and this being slightly different. Now, our distances that we have from the references are supposed to be 0.75. And I think they're actually point, supposed to be 0.875. And the other one is here. Like so. And here's where you might want to put on hidden line, a little bit easier to see. So there's my counter bore. right mouse button, pattern. And if I click on the dimensions tab here, I see that my first direction. And the first direction, I want to go horizontally. So let's pick the 0.875 that's horizontal and type in negative 1.75. And you'll see the other dot reference here for the instance. And then we'll click inside here. You can also do that by right mouse button. And, and you pick the vertical one. And it is also negative 1.75. Oh, didn't do it right. 
if you if you do this incorrectly, you don't put uh, negative in here. The holes will go out into space because they'll move off to the left and, the, and towards the top. Negative one point seven five. Okay, and see, I didn't do it right. Just to, I did that on purpose. Now you can see the display of where they're going to go. It doesn't display the whole counterbore in the pattern command. Check, and here we are. Now everything looks pretty good. But the reality of it is we want to check for references. If we go to our tools, we have a reference viewer. Or you can just click on a feature. Let's say let's click on this one, right mouse button and we'll select reference viewer and we'll see that we have the references for this all of them are to datum planes they're all within the actual see no parents they're all within the actual part no children no parents found for that part uh, for those that that feature so it's only linked to the part itself now it doesn't have an external reference but what if we select the pattern or one of the other, the first hole? It doesn't make any difference which one. And again, you can get this up in the ribbon. Here we see, oh, it's referencing the assemblies. It's dependent on the assembly. So we made an external reference, and we don't want that. Sometimes you do, but in this case, we don't. So how do we fix it? Select it, edit the definition go into placement, and you'll see these two are assemblies. We can remove them all. Now, we can drag and make sure it selects the datum plane, or we could just go and pick up DTM 1 and 2, like so. Make sure the placement is correct. Looks all right. And then let's go into our reference viewer, and we will see that there's no external references for the component. So make sure you save this. Control D, I should have done that first. You can save it again if you wish. And I think we'll close at this point, and then the last portion of this part three, we will assemble the subassembly and the assembly together and finish the the lesson. So we're going to be actually adding the subassembly when we start the next third part of this lesson.